What's up, everybody? It's Draymond Green. Make sure you subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel below so you don't miss any more of this great content going forward. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Draymond Green Show. This next guest, um, I'm excited to have. It's two-time All-Star, but as you all know, we always talk about this. You got to have a resume coming on this show. Two-time All-Star, NBA champion, 2019 Most Improved Player, now, the interesting thing about this guy being an NBA champion is, you, as you all know, there <laughs> aren't many guys that can say they beat us, me, and an NBA Finals. LeBron being one, and obviously the Raptors being the other one. I'm honored to have this next guest, my brother Pascal Siakam. Thank you for coming on the show, bro. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it for having me. I don't. I'm not a podcast guy, but there's a couple of them that I, you know, like when they tell me, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm in it. I'm in it. So let's go. I appreciate that, man. I, I, I can't say that I'm, I'm, I'm over 2019 yet. I know we won a championship last year, but no, nah, man, come on, bro. It's, 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 it's hard you got to get many, over that. You got too many of those to be to do that. You got too many of those to say that. Like you got a lot of them. But see, here's what you haven't experienced, and it, it is actually one of the worst things in the NBA that can happen to you, which is you go to the NBA Finals and you lose. Right. Yeah. Nah. Because as you, as you know, celebrating that, like, it's great. Like, you celebrate all summer. Everything's fantastic, right? But I had the same short summer you had. Yes. <laughs> and so you, you, you go that far and... Then you lose, and it's like the worst experience of all times. Like you lose two months of your summer. Right. No, I I, I definitely agree with that because I, I remember like when I went through, we went through that year, like the whole sub, the whole like season. And I started the season probably I was like two forty when I started the season. And once we got to the finals, I was probably like two eighteen, two two seventeen. <laughs> like bro, like I was like skinny. I'm like yo, like this is crazy. So, like, I can just imagine, especially, like, you guys, like, LeBron, like, going through, like, like, going there in a row and, like, just having that type of time. And then the summer was, like, new to me because usually I'm, like, yo, like, I'm in the summer. Like, that's my my, my favorite time of the year, basically, because, like, I'm I'm in the gym every day. I'm working, like, just routine, routine. And you get to that point, it's, like, man, like, we don't even have a summer, you know? So, like, it's, it's like yeah, it was crazy. So, I, I I can get that. I can definitely respect that for sure. Absolutely. But bro, I want to I want to uh start this off by going back to the beginning of your journey. Now, this, you know, when when I do these podcasts, um you like to do research uh so you know a lot about guys or in particular we had a woman our first woman last week, one of the ghosts Candace Parker. Um but you like to have information. I want to be 100% honest with you. I have the information that I know about you. And I didn't want to do much research because I wanted to hear the story from you. I wanted to learn more about you from you. And so what I know, like born in Cameroon, um, you, you came over, played at New Mexico State, you know, you got to the NBA. But I don't know all the fillers. And I didn't want to because I wanted you to fill me in on that. So just start me off, like take me back to Cameroon. What what age did you start playing basketball? Right. Um, yeah, started, well, because growing up in Cameroon, like, as, if, you, if you're from Cameroon and probably like a lot of countries in Africa, like when you grow up, you play, you play soccer or football, mm -hmm. like, what we, like they call it. And it's like, that's the first thing you do. Like we never, like you, you don't know anything else. Um, for me, I was lucky because my brothers played basketball. Like they started playing soccer, but then they started playing basketball. I'm the, I'm the youngest, you know, of six and, and, and I have four brothers. Um, I have three brothers and, and it's like, yo, like they started playing basketball. And growing up, like, I just, I just, you know, watched them. And I was like, man, like, maybe I'll try it. And I was probably like, first time I started playing basketball, I was probably like 16, 17. Yeah, like, right. it, was like it was like my first time. And I remember we went with my friends, like one of my friends, I came back because I was in boarding school. I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm like going everywhere, but I was in boarding school, like, and I came back. I usually come back for like the break. And I come back and some of my friends was like, yo, like we're going, we're going to this camp. And it's, it's, it's this NBA player and stuff. And I'm like, okay, like, I have no idea. I don't, I don't know anything about the NBA, really. And and it was Luke Balmute. And it was like, oh, okay, man, like, this is an NBA player. He's doing a camp. He's from Cameroon. And my friends was going. So they were like, all right, let's go. So I'm like, all right, cool. I have nothing to do. I'm like, all right, I, I don't mind, you know. So um, I I just went. And I was, I was one of the best players in the camp. 
Um, and and from that, I'm like, I didn't even know anything about basketball, you know. So it was just like super crazy that I was selected to that. And then after that, it was just like I went to basketball without borders the year after. Um, I was probably like 17, almost 18. And it was like after that, it was just like, man, I'm 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 going to college in the NBA. <laughs> oh, I, I'm going to college and then the NBA. So it was like pretty crazy, it's pretty fast, like the way it happened. And and so at that point, you're pretty much just you're just going off all sure athleticism. Yes, that's it. Like literally, because I mean, in school, like I was always obviously I was probably I was probably one of the best in like just like running, uh, like like high jump. Like we did all that stuff in school. So I'm like, I'm one of the best. But it was just like just pure athleticism, like from playing soccer and just like my stamina was good. So I could like run for days um, and and I could jump. So it was just literally just that, like literally just running and jumping, hustling. And and doing that and 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 that was just the first probably my first skill in basketball for sure. That's crazy. And one thing that I did here was that all of your brothers received uh, Division One scholarships to play mm-hmm. college basketball in yep. America. Yep. Yep. How 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 did how did that like th- that come about? Where they're receiving D- Division One scholarships? Like, what was the path for them to get that exposure? Yeah, no, the path for them is, like, obviously for me, um, growing up in Cameroon, like, I was blessed that my dad, like, my dad was, like, you know, like, he was okay, like, financially, like, you know, like, we, yeah, we we weren't, like, you know, like, we we had mostly everything that we needed, and his, like, he always dreamed about basketball and, like, the NBA, like, the, like this was his thing, like, he he loved that, and and so he always saw that, oh, I mean, you know, like, people that go in the NBA, they play college, and then they go to the NBA, so, like, that was like his thing. So he was like, all right, I'm going to do everything that I can to find a scholarship. So he he did all the work, like talk to the schools, like find schools. He had friends because he used to travel, go to the U.S., like back and forth or like even even the friends. And so he had like connections. So he would just find, he found people. They, they gave like, oh, okay, your, your son can come here and play high school basketball or something. Like, because they left earlier than me. I left when I was like 18 years old. Like I graduated high school and then I went to the U.S. My brothers, they went earlier. Like, so they started, they did probably like two years of high school or something like that, like probably each of them, and then was able to play high school basketball, get a scholarship, and then go go into the to the to the um to college. So how were you eventually spotted? Uh you ended up at New Mexico State. How were you eventually yep. spotted? So yeah, so I went to basketball without borders. After I went to basketball without borders, it was like, I mean, I got some attention, you know, from people. Uh, some people talked to my dad. And it was like, all right, like you can, you can go, we're going to find you a scholarship to go to like a prep school. I went to a prep school before in Texas. Um, and I probably did like, probably like a year there. And then after that, um, the, the, the prep school I went to, the coach, his son went to New Mexico State. Ah. So, so then his son went to New Mexico State. So from there, that's when I, I learned about the coach. I had no offers really. Like I had no offers or anything like that. This, this, the, 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 the dad, he talked to the coach about me or whatever. And then from there, it was like, all right, the coach likes me. This is my only college offer. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I'm in it. Like, so it was just like, it was just, that's just how it happened. <laughs> that's crazy. I had no offers at all. Like, at all. <clears throat> Man, when you came in, the, you, you eventually go on to be the 27th pick in the NBA draft. But again, I'm going to be totally honest with you. My first year playing against you, when you were with the Toronto Raptors, I'm like, yo, this, like, all right, this guy's athletic, but, like, I can go help. Like, mm-hmm. I can help off. I can go plug the gap. Like, I don't really have to worry about this guy much other than, like, him slashing, cutting, getting to the rim, offensive rebound. And then it's like the next year you came back. <laughs> and you're a totally different player. All of a sudden, now you got the ball in your hands. You, sh- you pulling up in the mini. You shooting a three. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo. Like, who is this guy? Like, how did he get this good this fast? Obviously, your work ethic is tremendous. I've seen you work. Uh, we've trained in the gym with some of the same people, Travel Gaines, Athletic Gaines with James. Yep. And I, I know how hard you work. But if, if you had to point to one or two people to say, without these people, mm-hmm. I would not be as good as I am. Who would you point to outside of just your pure work ethic? Right. Um, yeah, no, nah, for sure. Like I think again, like it, it takes a it takes a village for sure. Like, you know what I mean? Like to be able to to get to to this level. Um and I and I probably had a bunch of people in, in college that like um one of the coaches in college, it was his name was Preston. Like we was 
we was in the gym every day. Like literally, New Mexico State. I mean, we in Las Cruces. There's not much to do. Like we we like you're not gonna go out there and find like you know places to go where you're gonna go party and all that. Like you gotta drive like 45 minutes to go party somewhere. Like and that was in El Paso in Texas. Like so I'm like yo like I'm 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 sorry I'm not doing that just to party. Like I can't. So I'm like. F the parties, I'm I'm in the gym every day. Like, you know, we working out every single day. So that was like college. And then we get to the NBA. Um, I remember like my first time meeting Rico Hines. Like that was, for me, that was like the first person like that I got to work with, like really like, you know what I mean? Like we sat and just just build a plan together. And I remember my first time meeting him. Um, I think it was the first year they started doing like, you can go put your name in a draft and then like you see if you want to you wanna do it or not. Like, I think it was like, mm-hmm. I'm sorry they did that so which i think was a blessing so i'm 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 going there and i'm and i'm and i'm and i'm working out with rico like it was like my agent knows rico they went to ucla together um so it's like that relationship already and and i get there and i'm like all right like i'm trying to test the waters like i want to see like i want to see if i can if i can make this happen and my first time working out with rico and we played a little bit like the first time he saw me like he was like yo like I don't even know what you're thinking about. Like, stop, stop thinking. Like, like I don't, I don't want you to think about testing the waters, whatever the case might be. Like, you're an NBA player. Like, I don't want to hear nothing. Like, going back to school is gonna be a waste of time. Cause I remember at that time, like, I was really debating. Cause, like, my dad, like, he loved basketball, but like, his thing was like, yo, we got to finish school. Like, he was so big on that. Like, we got to finish school. Like, I don't want nobody just like going out there with no education. So. Like, that was always playing in the back of my mind. Like, yo, like, I want to be able to get my degree and all that, you know. So, but then, like, once once we had that conversation with Rico, man, like, he just put so much, like, confidence in me. Like, so much, like, you know, like, I, I've never really had, like, I've, I've had that before, obviously, my family, you know what I mean? But, like, people outside of that, like, um, just just believing in me. And, like, from that first day, it was like, yo, like, like, like let's do this. Like, you, you, you ready? And and after that, it was like, man, like you go out there every summer, we're in the gym every single day, just grinding. Like I'm there 24 seven, you know what I mean? Whenever you're looking for me in the summer, I'm in the gym, you know, <laughs> and he's the person, like he's the person that's there with me. So um, like that, that's a guy that I can definitely say like, yo, like, you know, we, we put the work in like, and and he was always there committed to the work every single day. Uh, man, Rico is incredible. I, you know, a, a lot of us have had the opportunity to be touched by Rico. Obviously, not um, for a lot for most guys, not to the extent that you have. But I just want to make sure on this show yeah, that yeah. Rico Hines get the love that he deserves. You know, I, yeah. I, I, and 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 just pointing at you, like uh, all NBA player, uh, an All Star. And like I've watched you guys grind from the beginning of your career to all of a sudden the entire Toronto Rock T- Toronto Raptors team is is out in in LA trying to get better. And 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 I personally, I think that all stems from your success and yeah. watching you and everything that you've done and the growth that you've had, brother. I take my hat off to you because <laughs> thank you. I, thank you. Appreciate I it. mean, you you literally went from a guy that they were spotting up in the corner that was not a corner shooter yeah. to like <laughs> all of a sudden, you like you out of nowhere becomes the second option, and like all right, like most guys can't take that next step to to become the number one option, bro. It's amazing, and so I just want you to know, man, I take my hat off to you as as a competitor, as someone who got to guard you. Um, right. Like when I guarded you well in the finals, we won. Clearly, I couldn't guard you well enough. We lost. You know what I'm saying? So, much respect, bro. Nah, I appreciate it, bro. Now, nah, now nah, for sure. Now, nah, and and that, that that means a lot because at the end of the day, like for 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 me, like I just I just feel like you know you put the work in and you do everything that you're supposed to do. But I think just like getting, especially being in Toronto too, like we don't like nobody really like like people. This is a joke around. It's like nobody really cares, right? Like so, I think that just to see that respect, you know, from somebody that that's done it at the highest level. You know what I mean? Like that, that means a lot for sure. No, no doubt. I appreciate it. And so y'all win the, y'all win the NBA finals your third year. Um, the, the two years leading up to that, uh, Kyle and DeMar leaders of the team, and yep. you guys are having great regular seasons, great mm-hmm. regular seasons. And eventually you run into LeBron in the playoffs yep. and can't quite get over the hump. It's like, it almost looked like LeBron's just, all right, I'll get to the Raptors and I'll win, no right, problem. Right, right, right. 
You guys then go on to trade Demar uh, for Kawhi Leonard. When mm. when you see that trade happen, I'm I'm, I'm super close to Demar. Mm. I know you have a relationship with Demar as well. So number one, you see that trade happen. Uh, what are you thinking about the business of basketball? Number one, to see your number one player get traded, yep. and at that early in your career, what are you thinking about the business? But then also, what are you thinking when you see that y'all got Kawhi Leonard coming in? Right. Yeah, no, I think that, like, obviously, like, instantly, like, the first thing is just the shock value of everything, right? Like, because I think for, for everyone, we saw DeMar in Vegas. Like, we saw DeMar in Vegas before all that. So, like, for us, it's like, yo, we saw DeMar. We have our, our, our meetings that we usually do. We're in Vegas. It's summer league coming up. Like, so we, we're hanging out. So, like, I see DeMar. So, from that, it was just, like, the shock value of it. It's like, yo, like, what is happening? Like, I, I'm just, I'm confused. And and obviously, like for someone that's just close to Demar and like just love him as a person, like bro, like Demar as a player, he was always one of my favorite players. I always used to tell him, like when we, we, even when he was on our team, I'm like, yo, like you one of my favorites, like like just the mid range, like the things like he just looked so easy and effortless for him, like the way he was doing it. Um, so I think just from being a fan and also and then also being like his teammate and his brother, I'm like I'm hurt, right? Because I'm like, yo, like mm-hmm. this is this is crazy, and and like you said, it's early on in my career. I'm thinking like, like like this can like if that happened to Demar like I don't I can't even imagine what's gonna happen to me you know what I mean so I, <laughs> so that's the way I'm thinking about it like yo like this is crazy um so those are the first things and then after after the shock value everything calmed down you're upset you're mad you know like you, you in your room you, you're upset about everything but then after that you think about like the player that you're getting and in Kawhi Leonard like another person that I watched you know what I mean for me like just. Someone I went to San Diego State, mid-major. I was a mid-major. Like he he came in the NBA. Like he wasn't really like like doing all these things. Mm-hmm. Like he was a defender. Like he was, it was, it was this and that. And then he became this huge star. So that's another person that I'm like, yo, like I watch from far. And I'm like, yo, like he, his game is dope. And 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 so from that, I'm just like, yo, I'm excited. Like, yo, like this is crazy. You know, like getting an opportunity to play with someone like that. And 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 being on the same team, being able to learn from him. Um, so after so after the shock, it was just like kind of like excitement to see like, yo, what can we do with this person? Because we've got a player that's you know that's like really, 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 really good. You know, so yeah. And you know, you guys, you know, summer plays out. You guys going to training camp? Are you thinking at that time like that Kawhi? It's possibly the guy that gets us over the hump. Because, again, you, what you just mentioned was, hey, you're in Toronto where no one's talking championships. Like, it's Toronto. Like, basketball isn't that – and, and let, like, basketball has grown in Toronto over the last 15, 20 years. But hockey's the biggest thing in Toronto, hockey and Drake. Like, and, I mean, and now – Now, <laughs> now, no, 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 that was the case. But okay. now you guys have changed okay. that. But that change also comes with winning a championship. For sure. When your rookie year, that wasn't the case. Like, it, but then you guys win a championship, and now a lot of people care about the about the Raptors. But are you thinking at that point, you guys are going into camp, you got Kawhi Leonard, like, yo, this team can possibly win a championship. Is, is that the conversation around the team going in? Um, I, I don't think if for us, like for me, if I don't think for Kawhi, I think it was, you know, but for mm-hmm. us, it's just like, again, obviously, like we've never done it before. So like, you know, like obviously we want to be, we always had great, great teams, you know, like we go to playoffs, we do everything. So we, we thinking we're a great team, but at the end of the day, you don't really think ahead of that. Like you don't really think like, like it doesn't get in your mind right away. You know what I mean? Because it's just like something that you really haven't done. Um, but but just looking at our roster and the players that we have, I'm like, yo, like we have a we have a damn good team. You know what I mean? Like that's what I'm thinking, you know. But I don't I don't know to what extent. Like I don't yeah. know how it's gonna work with Kawhi. We never played together. Like like so at that point, I'm like I don't I don't know what's happening. You know, like I, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it was, it was Nick was the coach. Like all these different things. Like it's it's just a little different and. And I had I had literally no idea what was gonna happen at that point, you know. Like, so I couldn't I couldn't really pinpoint like from the beginning of the season I couldn't see that I couldn't see it right away. Sure. No, no, While the season was going, then you kind of like, oh my god, like this is it's getting interesting, you know. Like I think mm-hmm. that's that's what I would say. Yeah. You guys end up matching up uh, with 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 the Philadelphia 76ers in the second round of the playoffs, and 
Um, obviously, we all know Kawhi hit the sh- hit the big shot in the corner, bounce, bounce, it drops in. But I thought there was something interesting uh, that that took place in that series uh, with a with with a fellow Cameroonian for yourself and and Joel and B. And you came out then and you said he's a fake tough guy. <laughs> um, like, and 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 I I would like to know, a number one, what made you say that then, and and where do y'all relationships stand now, being yeah. you know two guys from the same country? Right. No, I think it's just it's all love because I think he's where well, I'm from. You know, I'm from Douala. He's from Yaounde, right? Like we, if you if you're from Cameroon or you know anything about Cameroon, like those are the two cities, right? It's like Douala, Yaounde, and it's always back and forth, like just like. <laughs> always talking trash, beef, like whatever you want to call it. We have the best city. We have the best girls. We have the best parties. Like we always, you know, so it's always like, like that, that little back and forth. So I think for, for, for us, like just going back and playing against each other, like every time we do, it's like, it's always that, like that little, like, I just want to do better for my city. Cause I know that, you know, <laughs> we're better than y'all, you know, like, saying? like so that, that's always that. So, and you know, Joel, like he's not going to hold, his tongue, he's not gonna hold his punches. Like he's gonna, he's gonna talk, he's gonna do all that. And when we play against each other, he's gonna make sure that I don't score. Like he's gonna like be there helping, <laughs> do whatever he gotta do. Like, you know what I mean? Like just because of that. But but in, in, in terms of our, our relationship, like actually, like it's like, nah, like we we cool, you know what I mean? Like we talk all the time, and it's like it's always love. Like at the end of the day, like two kids from where we from, like being at this level, like it's it's unheard of, you know what I mean? Like. Obviously, we had our big brothers that was there before us, like like the Lungba Mute, like like the Bumche Bumche, like all those people. But to be at this level, like and play where we at, like it's crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, so definitely we feel blessed and stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, once we go on the court, like it's beef, like we 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 at it. Ain't no friends, ain't no friends on this court. I'm at your neck. <laughs> um, obviously that plays out. We end up, you know, go to the conference finals. Then we end up playing against each other in the NBA finals. And we come into that series, Kevin Durant's out. Uh, You guys immediately take control of the series. Kevin Durant comes back in game four. Game three. Game game four. Game four. It might have been game four. Game four. And when Kevin Durant comes back, I look up six minutes to go on the clock. And we got 36 points. And I'm like, yo, it's six minutes to go in the first quarter. We got 36 points. When you see Kevin Durant come back, he's clicking like that. We're clicking. What's the thought in your mind at that point? Bro, I'm not going to lie to you. So before the game, like, so you guys are working out and stuff, like, and at first it was like, it was always like a debate. Like, oh, is KD going to play? Whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. So... We get there and it's like, yo, like he's warming up. And I was like, all right, all right, bet. Like KD's here, he's playing. Like it's a little like, all right, all right, man. Like we're not, we're not expecting this, but whatever. Like we're like, okay, we we kind of like thinking still in our heads, because you know, like you said, we took control control of the series. So in our heads, we're thinking like the momentum is on us. Like we have the momentum, like we're still good, you know. But we get in that game, bro. Like, oh my God, like. I don't think KD, like, I don't think he touched, the like, the rim, like, one time. Like, I don't, I don't even think he touched the net. Like, he shot the ball, and I don't think, that, like, I don't think he touched the net, bro. Like, it was just, like, straight. Like, he was pulling from, like, whatever. Like, that shit was, like, <laughs> was crazy. Like, water, like, nothing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm just, like, yo, this is going to be a long night. Like, at that point, like, literally, like, if there was, like, any panic, like, at any time, I think it would have been like that point, like when KD like came back, because it was just like for us, like we felt like we matched up well with you guys, you know what I mean? Like, and and obviously, like it's tough to guard, like play Steph, like obviously with you, like all the things, like the movement, like all, all your offense and everything that you guys do. And it's like, yo, it's crazy. But then you add KD that we would feel like, yo, like he's really like unguardable, it feels like, because like some of the time, <laughs> like, I hope that he missed, right? Like you got to do your best and like, Challenge it the best that you can and just hope that it missed. So absolutely. For us, it was just like, yo, know, like adding KD and the way he was playing, like he started that game, it was like, yeah, like it was a little the little panic right there. No, for sure. And then obviously Kevin gets hurt. Actually, this game, that's game five. Kevin came back. Because Kevin gets hurt in game five. We go back to Golden State game six. 
Clay gets hurt in game six. And so that was definitely game five. But um, walk me through the feeling. Uh, you know, you guys eventually close the series in game six, going to the first championship uh, for the Toronto Raptors. But your first, your first championship, walk me through that feeling of getting over that hump and 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 then you like wow like wait we we're, we're NBA champions walk me right. through that initial feeling cuz I'll tell you something for me personally obviously I've been fortunate enough to win four and I'll tell you what you win that first one and it's the most amazing thing in your life you win the second one third one fourth one and the most amazing thing to me after that is seeing the guys who win it for the first time so you right. got guys now on the team who hasn't won one and like you celebrate with those guys and seeing the guys who won it the first time yeah. is the most amazing thing. Talk to me, walk me through that feeling of winning that first championship. Yeah, no, like it was, uh, it's crazy. Um, Cause I, I just think that for us, like like you said, like we've had that talk of like, oh yeah, the Raptors gonna go, they're gonna have a great regular season. They're not gonna do anything in the playoffs. So like we we hear that all the time. And and I heard it when I was with Kyle, DeMar and all those guys. And obviously I was, I was younger coming up um, but but that's all we heard. So I think you already have that that in your mind. And 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 I think for us, like just winning was like, yo, like this is like we actually did it. You know what I mean? Like, and it wasn't just like it was like a team where like everyone like kind of like played a part in like winning a championship. Like obviously you remember the Kawhi shot and all those different things, but like you know, Milwaukee series, Fred coming back and hitting all those threes, you know, even even in in the finals against you guys, like those three, like me making the shot, like you know, Mark, like Kyle, that first, that game six coming up, like going crazy, you know, like that first quarter. Um, you just think about all those moments, you know what I mean? Like, and it was just like amazing, bro. Like just like the the hard work that you put in and and just like that that joy that you get from like knowing that you are the best team in the NBA, like it's just, it's just incredible. Um, and 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 the other part of that is the city, like the country. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't, it wasn't, it's like, okay, I, I obviously like you win as as the, the Warriors, right? Like you San Francisco, yeah. everyone is happy and stuff, but imagine you won that and the whole US is like it's excited, you know, like so that's how absolutely high. you know what I mean? Like a whole country is excited about it, like got people are going crazy. Like you hear so till today, like I'm I still hear stories of people being like, man, like that championship, I remember where I was. Like I remember, like you, you can't even, you don't even know what that brought to me, my family, like things like that. So, I think that's just what makes it like so, so much sweeter. No, I think I, that that's amazing, man. I, and I always wonder about that feeling, which actually brings me to my next question because when it happened, I looked and I'm like, how can you walk away from that? Uh, shortly after that, two weeks, not even, you get the news that Kawhi Leonard is leaving and going to the LA Clippers. Mm. Quite frankly, I'm not sure how you can walk away from having an in, in, entire. Right. I mean, I feel like Kawhi would have right. owned Canada had he stayed. <laughs> like, and, and you know, he walked away. What's the mindset then? Once once you realize, like, yo, we're losing Kawhi, right. and not only are we losing Kawhi, because you know, when you look back at it, not often do you lose stars or people like that for nothing. Mm -hmm. And when you look back at it. Like, that was the deal. Like, that was the risk. Like, Masai makes the trade for Kawhi. He got one year left on his contract. And you, you're you risking him walking off, but ultimately in hopes that you get a championship. So you accomplished the goal. Yep. But on the flip side, you'd hope that the goal that you accomplished allows you to run it up a little longer. Right. And then Ka Kawhi leaves. What What's the mindset once, once y'all find out that Kawhi is leaving and headed to the L.A. Clippers two weeks later? Yeah. Um, I think, well, it's like mixed, right? Like, I think at the end of the day, like for me, it was just like, man, like if, if there's one person that I would see do that, it would be Kawhi. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like in my head, like that would be the only, like the one person that I'd be like, yo, like I can see him like doing that. Cause you know, the way he conducts his business, the way he is, like all the things that he does, like it's always in like, just like a particular way. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so I think for me, like I'm thinking, like man, like and like, I don't think he can leave. But at, a, at the same time, like yo, like it's Kawhi, right? Like Kawhi is gonna <laughs> it. He's gonna do what he wants, like and and much power to him because I, I like that's who he is as a person. You know what I mean? Like that's how he's always been conducting anything. So um, obviously, like 
you hurt because it's like, yo, like, what can we, like, we look at our team, it's like, yo, like, we can really do this, you know what I mean? I'm evolving, Fred is evolving, everyone is getting, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's growing to their own, and we're thinking, like, yo, we can really build something special. Um, and, and Kawhi leaves, so it was just like, man, like, this is, this is, it was, it was sad, like, it hurt, but at the same time, like, I can't, like, like I said, like, I can only see Kawhi do that, you know what I mean? Like, and, and, and it didn't really feel like, oh, you know, like, Cause, cause I, I can see that happening. Like I, I'm not totally like surprised by, by it, you know, at the same time. So, yeah. Did Kawhi make a mistake? Did Kawhi make a mistake? Uh, I mean, I don't want to say he made a mistake. Like that's that's crazy to say. Cause you know, like at the end of the day, man. Like I think, as we all know, it's like the man happiness and like and like mm-hmm. being, you know, doing what you you want to do and and being in a place that's gonna make you the most happy. Like. That's the most important thing above all, you know. Like mm-hmm. I love Kawhi as a, as a brother, as someone that that we won a championship together. But like I would never like be like, oh, you made the wrong the, the wrong choice, you know what I mean? Just because he made a choice that was good, for, like for him, you know. Like mm-hmm. and, and I respect it. Um, but do I wish that? And and I look at it in hindsight, like yo, like if it was on our team, like wow, how we would look, you know? Yeah. Like yeah, maybe it would look a little different. But I can't I can't blame the man for for making a decision for for himself and his family. No, I can appreciate that, man. You watch you watch people in this league that think like our lives belong to them or 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 our decision making belongs to 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 everyone else. And so I I can appreciate your stance on that. Cause I, I watched like when Kevin Durant first came to us and like people were mad at him. Like, how how can you be mad at someone? for yeah. deciding what they want to do with their life. Like, you don't just wake up and go to the gym. Like, you wake up, you live in that city. You wake up, like, everything that you do, like, that's a huge part of it. So I can appreciate yeah, your nah. stance on that. Yeah, no, nah, it's a lot that comes with that. Like, it's, it's so much more. Like, and you understand it. Like, and you know, I think for us, we understand it. And and I want to say one thing about, like, because it's one thing that I really hate. It's like, this whole thing now, like, people are betting and stuff. Like, it's probably, like, that culture is, like, the craziest thing to me. Cause like people would literally like, like really wish you like death because they missed whatever they was betting on. Like it's the craziest thing to me. <laughs> like, I just want to say like I don't like it, <laughs> and it's, stop it's, messaging me about you lost your parlay. I don't care. I don't really. <laughs> I can care less if you miss your parlay today, tomorrow. Like whatever you did, whatever you bet, I really could care less, bro. Like I don't care. <laughs> it does not matter. <laughs> it That's doesn't matter. So to me. Yeah, I still got to go me and, and, and my, the people that I love. Like, I don't care about nothing else. Absolutely, man. A few <laughs> more questions. I'm going to get you out of here. I know you and Philly want to get on with your evening. I appreciate you taking the time. All right, in 2022, you were not named an All-Star, mm. but you made All-NBA team. Right. <laughs> which, to me, is, like, kind of crazy yeah. because it's actually harder to make All-NBA yeah. than it is to be an All-Star. Right. What did you make of that when you see your name come out in the All NBA team and you like I, I didn't even make All Star? You like yeah. what did you make of that? I was just I was confused because again like it just for me I don't I, I I don't understand like the criteria like I don't understand anything I don't understand the criteria of like what it is to be an All Star or All NBA MVP like all these different things like I'm just literally like lost in all of that so like I was confused obviously I felt like I was an All Star. But then it didn't it didn't happen. And then in my head, I'm like, all right, whatever. Like I'm just continuing my season. I'm, you know, I'm balling, I'm doing whatever. And then I get all NBA. It was just like, I was just confused, like to be honest with you. Like I I don't know, I don't know how it works. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and and, and I, I just learned for me, like with everything that happened in my life, like I control the things that I can control. And then the rest of it, like, man, like I could really care less. Like all I care about is just doing, doing what I love, going out there playing control what I can control and and I'm not going to stress over things that I can't really control so people pick who's all NBA and all star and all that and that and that happens and and I just go with it and and speaking of that um there's been a lot of news lately uh and I'm sure we'll probably see it soon with the new CBA coming up but there's been a lot a lot of news about uh criteria as you just spoke on for all NBA for all star but in particular for these major awards, uh, MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, Most Improved Player, in which you won, um, 
and should there be a game limit and all of these things? Where do you stand on that? Should there be a, a, a certain amount of games that you have to play in order to uh, con- in order to be rewarded uh, right. with one of those major awards? Yeah. No, I mean, I, I do think so because because I, I think that like um, it, it takes. It takes a lot, and 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 most of the time, like obviously, like when I was coming up, and I and I think for me being just like one of the one of the players, you know, spying up in a corner and just you know and just and just playing defense and running and doing all that, like it's like it takes a lot, but at the same time, it's like man, like you play twenty minutes a night or whatever, like you cool, you know, like and I think that there's some people that like out there playing thirty plus every single night. Like like people like you guys that go to the playoffs, go to the finals, and do it like consistently. I think that that just makes it like so much harder. Like being out there doing it every day on a consistent basis. Like like you know what I mean. Like it just I think it just makes it like so much harder, and and it takes like so much. Like like that's why I admire people like you know the LeBrons and those people that like man like it's it's crazy to do it consistently in that amount of time. You know what I mean? Like okay. and every day putting the work in, not missing really games. I mean, unless you're really, really injured um, and and just doing it every single day. I think that's what makes it hard because I think there's a lot of people that can do it, you know, like you can do it one year or you can do it, you know, for 30 games, 40 games, you know, but can you do it for 82 games for five, six, seven, eight seasons? You know, like I think that's what makes the greats who they are. And that's what, you know, for me, a player, like you strive for that, you know, like I want to play as many games as, as I can put the work in to be the best, like for the longest that I can. And, and, and I feel like that's what makes it like, like really special. So yeah, if you ask me, I would say, I would say, yeah, it should, it should matter. Like how many games you played, you know, to be able to win the words. No doubt. Uh, a foreign player yourself, uh, this league has grown in tremendous ways. It's a very global game, a global league. And top three this year for the MVP race is, international players. I think that says a lot about the game. I think that says a lot about the growth of, you know, basketball in other countries is huge. But if you had a vote, uh, who are you voting for MVP this year? Oh yeah. If I had a vote for MVP, I mean like, um, obviously it's gotta be, it's gotta be like, you know, my Cameroonian brother, like it's gotta be like, you know, it's gotta be and be like, um, I think that, um, you know, he's doing it. You know, at all like he's been doing it for years, but like just you know this year doing it at an incredible level. Um, and and he's just he's just playing unbelievable basketball. Like the team is winning. Um, he's doing it on both ends of the floor. Um, and 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 I'm sure there's like a lot of other people out there that deserve it. Like you know, like the Tatum's and and the, the Jokic and like all these people. But I think for me, like you know, I obviously I might be biased, but at the same time, it's like. <laughs> Like, I'll, it would be awesome to see someone from where I'm from, like, win an MVP. Like, that would be crazy. It's crazy inspiration, like, just to know that, like, man, like, th- this is really possible. Like, um, and and not only that, I, not only that I'm biased, I think he also deserves it. No, for sure. I think I think he's deserving as well. I, I must say, and I, I now know Joel listens to this stuff because he bust my ass last week because of something I said on here. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw that out there. But I must say, uh-huh. after he had that conversation with me at half court about why he just played the way he played, hmm. for him to not play versus Denver, uh-huh. especially especially the way he dropped Joker off in Philly. Like, he really right. went at Joker in Philly. Right. He got the best of that matchup that night. I was a little disappointed that he didn't play in Denver that night. Right. I must say that. Right. But right. you just said something very interesting. And and it's a real thing, what you said. I may be biased. And, I, and I, what I want to say to that is, you probably are biased. And right. you are. There's no probably. You are biased. Now, it's a good bias because Joel is right there. It's not like you're saying something random. Like, Joel should right. be MVP. Right. But my point with that is, the people who are making these decisions are also biased. Right. And that's one of the issues that I have with these awards because you think about these awards. These awards decide if you're going to be in the Hall of Fame. These awards decide how you're going to be viewed and what you've put 15, 20 years of your life into ultimately in the long run. And, like, you have these people voting. And I just disagree with the voting criteria. Like, I mean, like, who's voting? Like, Like, 
I, I don't quite understand that because there are biases. Just like you just said, I'm I'm a little biased. Right. You can't tell me like if I if, if I'm up for defensive player of the year and it's me versus someone else. Do you think Kendrick Perkins wouldn't be biased towards me as defensive player, like voting for me defensive player, even if I'm deserving? Like, I, I 100% think he'd be biased. And so, right. like, what do you make of, like, who's voting for these awards and, right. like, the like the way it's determined? Because another thing it does is it determines how much money you make. Right. And that's crazy to me. For sure. Yeah, no. It's it's pretty crazy. And, and, and I think for me, that's why, like, like I said, like, I've, I've just disconnected myself totally from that just because I'm like, yo, like I, I really don't understand it. Like I, I don't get it, you know? And, and like you said, it's like just, just people voting for that. And yeah, some, some might have biases, you know? Like, so it's like, like, what do you, what do you do? Like, I'm sorry, like, do, who do we make to, to, to have these votes? Like, I don't know. Like, who do we choose instead of those people to vote? Like, do we have computers voting? Like, what, what do we do? You know what I mean? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Like, I feel like it's, it's just so hard and, and and I feel like yeah, it's gonna be biased. Like and and it's hard. Like it's like, who do you? I, I just don't know how to respond to it because I'm like, who do you put in that position to make those votes? Like like, who do, would you suggest like to to be to be voting for all, all NBA and like all this stuff? Like, who do you think? I think I think I think just like other things, coaches, um, because like there's a way of doing that that you can't vote for your player, right? Like mm-hmm. you you can't vote for your guy. I think they have a better sense. They watch the most film. Like they like I just think it has to be a better way in deciding these things. Now, what you I know the argument that they would make as coach, well, some coaches would do this so you don't make as much like right. I don't think there's a perfect answer. Yeah. But I do think at some point it has to be addressed. Like like for instance, all-star starter. Maybe there's a situation of media carries this much weight. Coaches mm-hmm. carry this much weight and then we like you know we equal out the two in some way but i just think the way that it's done right now yeah i'm just not totally sure it's I agree tough with it. man it's hard that's why like i told you bro like i i try to yeah, i try to just like man like i i can control it whatever happens happens you know no doubt no doubt <laughs> and uh, something uh two more questions number one uh your name came up in a ton of trade rumors and you know i i kept watching y'all games and watching Years and checking the box scores when I didn't get a chance to watch. Play steady, same thing, doing what you do, not being bothered by that. How do you handle all of the trade rumors? Because your name come up every year. Just, I mean, and quite frankly, it's just because of how good you are. Your name's going to keep coming up. How do you handle that? Uh, you know, when those all those trade rumors are coming up. Yeah, no, it's tough. It was it was tough early on. Like I think that you know, like early on, like for me, like just seeing that and 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 I think that I was I mean I'm not a huge social media person but but at the same time like early on like I was really on social media I'll, I'll go on Twitter like I'll check what's going on like like I'll be on Instagram you know I'll see the comments and and you know like and even the worst thing you can ever like possibly do like if you're a young player coming up like don't ever like go on Twitter and put your name in like it's probably the worst thing you can do. You type your name on the search bars. Like, it's it's horrible. Like, don't do it. You know, like, and and, and I, I'll do I'll do that. Like, as as a young player, and I think for me, like, just what I understood from like just going through it, like the trades, like you know, with Demar and like all the stuff that I saw, um, all these things happening, like seeing like how someone can be loved, and then the next minute, you know, you the you the worst person in the world. Like, um, going through the pandemic, like. Like all these different things, like I just like learn like for me as a person, like to to disconnect myself with like with that, you know. Like I I try to, you know, I'm not on Instagram all the time. Like I like I just I just make sure that I have control over like what I do. Like what do I follow? Like who do I who do I you know like you know what pages do you follow? Like what do you see every day when you wake up? Like and all those different things. And I try to just like have my mental right in in a space where like I'm focusing on what matters. You know, I'm focusing on my family. I'm focusing on my team and playing basketball, the game that I love, and and try my best. It's hard, obviously. Like it's it's, it's hard. Like you want to be on Instagram all the time. You want to be on Twitter. You want to check these things. But I just think that what changed for me was just being able to have that balance and knowing like what really matters and 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 trying to just like disconnect. You know, whenever I need it, and um, it's been it's been the best thing for me because. Because it's helped me to just be kind of like level headed, headed, and and just like knowing that like yo, like I got to come in, do my job every single day, no matter ups and downs, 
bad game, good game. I still got to show up at, at nine o'clock, eight o'clock in the gym and work out. I still got to, I still have a game the next day. You know what I mean? Like I still have these things. Absolutely. Happening. And, and once I just like understood that, like I was able to just be like, man, whatever happens, happens. And, and, and yeah, like you're also fortunate that being at a certain level, like, I feel like my value is the same everywhere. Like, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, as mm-hmm. long as I'm going to work in, like, wherever I'm at, like, I, I'll be, I'll, I'll have the same value just because of the work that I put in. And and so I just try not to focus on what I can't control. No doubt. And before we get out of here, um, <clears throat> there's a rule in the NBA that if, if, if an owner of an NBA team is the lead investor on a deal, we can invest, which I think is like some old rule that needs to be changed because quite frankly, like you look at, at, at the owners of NBA teams today, they are some of the most powerful people in business. Like you look at a Michael Rubin who recently just sold, but like Michael Rubin is one of the most powerful businessmen soon to be of our generation. You know, um, Joe Lacob, who's, who's, you know, one of the majority owners of the Warriors, He's huge in the tech space. Peter Goober is huge in the film and producing space, who's another majority. Yet, if they're in the deal, I can't quite participate in it. And it's the same for you, uh, obviously, as an NBA player. But the question I wanted to ask you was this, and it's a two-part question. Obviously, the BAL, uh, Basketball African League, which I'm sure you're, I know you're super familiar with, um, yeah. Would you want to own a team in that league Mm -hmm. and say at some point in your career, maybe later in your career, because you will probably make another few hundred million dollars here in the NBA. (laughs) But but, uh, at some point in your career, if they said, Pascal, we want you to go play in the BAL, we'll give you ownership of a team or we'll allow you access to ownership of the team that you're going to play for, Mm -hmm. but you'd have to go play in that league. Would that be something that you would entertain? Uh, if 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 you were given the opportunity at ownership in the BAL league, because I think that league is going to grow right. crazy over yeah, the next no, five think, to ten years. Yeah, I think for sure. Like, I think for for me, obviously, I want to be involved in that. You know, like I think that as a, as an African player, um, someone that came up and 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 for us to be able to just kind of like you know be the voice and 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 the the, the you know like the younger people the generation see us and they see Joel they see me they see all the African players and like they want to be like us and I think that we're just part of like that 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 machine that's growing the game in Africa you know what I mean like as mm-hmm. obviously with NBA and 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 all those those other other entities and 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 I would I would definitely love to to be an owner an owner of, of a team you know the BAL like that would be crazy to me like being from Africa and and, and being able to do that and and you know I don't know maybe in my career if I'm like old maybe yeah like you you you'd be like yo let's let's go and play over there and 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 if the game is growing the way it is over there and like which the growth that you talked about like if it's going that way um like yeah like why not but owning a team for sure like and and like I, that's something that I would love to do and and being a part of it you know so no, hopefully that sure. can I think yeah, yeah. I, I hope it can happen for you. I, because what 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 brought me to the idea was like uh, a couple of years ago, Andrew Bogan, who's a former teammate of mine, taught me a ton. Um, he went back. He he's, he's part owner of the Sydney Kings in Australia, um, and he went back and he played for the team. They won a championship, mm-hmm. and like to go to like to think this man just went and played for his own team, helped him win a championship. How great that is for for their brand as a team and continuing to grow. But also he gets to participate in the upside. You know, it's like for us, like you want to, you want a championship for the Toronto Raptors. You don't get to participate in the upside of that. Like I won four championships here with the Golden State Warriors. I don't get to participate in the upside of that. And I just think like, again, it's one of those old tired rules where it's like, no, we understand ownership at this point as players, you know, like we're more privy to information now Yes, maybe that was a rule in the 60s, 70s, 80s when we weren't privy to the information that we're or that we're privy to now. Right. But we understand ownership now and to be able to participate in the upside of the asset that you're driving, mm-hmm. I think it's long overdue. And when I was looking at the BAL League, because it's something that I've actually researched and been watching, because at some point I would love to be involved. And right. I just wanted to know your take, um, you know, as yeah. an African-born player. 
Yeah, no, I appreciate it. And I think that, like, again, like, I think just having, knowing that, you know, like, even for you to be, be go out there, do the research and, 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 you know, like, you're not just going to research anything. You know what I mean? I think that just shows that for us, like, how the game is growing, you know, obviously the, the NBA is, is involved. So it makes it, you know, like <laughs> already like a big thing. Um, mm-hmm. And just to know that, like, man, like there's going to be young, young kids out there in Africa that could go to that league one day and then be able to find themselves in the NBA. Or maybe it grows to a level where it's big enough where some people will just go out there and they play, they live a good life. And, and, and you know, like, and they play the game, they play basketball and mm-hmm. they, they stay in, in, in Africa and, and, and do great things, you know, so... I just I hope that like yeah like it keeps growing and 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 yeah I just I hope that we we can get an opportunity to to be involved in that. My brother Pascal Siakam, NBA champion. Although it burns me to say that <laughs> one, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Thank you so much. Nah, Welcome back it. anytime. No, nah, I appreciate it for sure. Nah, and and again, want to give you your flowers. Appreciate you everything that you do and and obviously like being being able to do what you did, you know, and winning those championships and being a, a part of that organization. Like, and another person that for me, you know, you watch and he's like, man, like he's doing all these things on the floor. I want to be able to do all those things on the floor, you know? So, um, nah, that's, it's great. And I appreciate it for having me. Thank you, brother. You're much better than me. I appreciate <laughs> you though, champ. I appreciate <laughs> it, bro. Nah, Thank you. It. Thank you. What's up everybody. It's Draymond Green. Make sure you subscribe to the volumes YouTube channel below so you don't miss any more of this great content going forward.